What's up, everyone? It's Gavin or Tweak. It's too lit consistency. It's Marcus or Pink. What up? What up? Pink or Marcus? <laughs> What's up? It's Charles or Charles. All right, and it's Has bringing us in. Of course, we had two amazing tournaments. This I'm not doing it this week. I've had enough. I don't have the patience this week. Uh, we had two amazing tournaments this weekend. VCA, the Vienna Challengers Arena, amazing, amazing tournament. Actually, low key the tournament of the weekend. You know, usually we give it to the U.S. side of things, but there are a lot of great players and stories going on uh, at VCA. But that's not to overshadow uh, Lost Tech City, uh, also an incredible tournament here stateside in the United States. So. A lot of big results, and I think the key one we're going to start talking about is one character in particular, Bayonetta. Is this Bayonetta. A Watch? Oh. Any Bayo fans in the chat? Any Bayo fans? Dude. Yes. Lima well, Amazon. well, well. I know. I know. Well, well, well. Well. What is that for? Is that what? Is that directed at one of us? No, 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 no. <laughs> I used to say that I thought Bayonetta was really good because Bayonetta – has obscene damage output like it's ridiculous the amount of damage that bayonetta can do and she like you like kind of start your stock at 100 and then she just has to make a couple reads sometimes you don't even get to start your stock at 100 sometimes she just kills you um but more likely than not you're probably just going to start your stock at 100 and she just makes a couple reads and then it's next stock and you go again and uh, with the addition of a lot of the buffs um Killing is becoming less and less of an issue I've seen yeah. um, with like up tilt back air and jab. So I saw Lima do like fair one jab, like near the ledge. I was like, oh, that dragged you pretty far, actually. Like before. The confirms I, into jab is the most yeah. impressive thing. Like jab is pretty hard to land. It's frame nine. But if you're starting to confirm off of it, off of like uh -huh. rising or falling fair, then all of a sudden it's like pretty solid, right? Dude, and it takes I you pretty far. I gotta say, yeah. her well, Witch Twist being frame six is super nice too. Great out of shield option, a lot of damage, you know, potential and stage control off of that. And dude, her F smash is really good, like really, really. Good. And there are confirms that like falling up air to F smash. I think it was. I don't. It's crazy that there are two Bayos that we need to think about, and keep track of. I don't know which one of them hit it, but someone got a KO at like forty. You know what I'm saying? Like it was up air, bat, uh, forward smash, just stole. Like, I'm pretty sure it was Lima, but either way, yeah, Bloom taking the entire tournament, including. A lot of great, like, this tournament was insane, VCA. Um, Fatality was there, ninth place finish. Uh, Gluto Space had a good tournament, too. Um, Aegis Niraz as well, good Pikachu player. A lot of just, like, this bracket was insane. Rafflo had a great tournament. Mr. R went crumb again and got oh, upset wow. again. Wow, what wow. does it take? It was a link. Actually, that link player was that. Do you see the confirm that link player hit the bomb coast to coast? That was so sick. To uh, yo, Tass Link. I told you guys, yeah. I had Tass Link up pretty high on my tier list. Better than Samus, you know. I mean, no way. No, we get said out of here. we said better than Samus, but Tass Link. Tass Link does not exist, dude. No way. People <laughs> sleeping on Tass Link, Tass Banjo. I'm telling you, <laughs> bro. And uh, Abo went like. Pikachu, Meta Knight, Dark yeah. Samus? Where did that... I don't think... That's usually what Ava does in Japan. Like, Pikachu, Samus, Meta Knight. Yeah. What the heck? Uh, and it's then... Very strange, but... Bloom, too, also had a uh, character up their pocket, too. Didn't see that so, coming, honestly. I'd never seen the brawler from Bloom before. Apparently, Bloom Bloom's young, so Bloom's like one of those kids. Like, you know how Zomba plays Rob? But you might see Zomba play, like, 19 other characters because he just plays the game that much and he's really good at the game. That's that's kind of how Bloom is. Like, Bloom yeah. has a Rosa, a PT, a Wolf, a Joker. Like, obviously, the Brawler. Like, there's so many characters that Bloom could just pull out at any point. Obviously, uh, the main is Bayo, but, you know, kids got a lot of time. <laughs> they can be good at a lot of characters. My, uh main thing from VCA was act was obviously Bloom versus Gluto. I watched a lot of that pretty much exclusively. Like I just I just really love Wario and I'm a pretty big fan of Bayo too. Um I don't know if uh I don't know much about Gluto's experience against Bayo in four. Apparently Gluto is actually pretty good at it in four, but I, I don't know too much about that. But I don't know. Really? I think in four Do you do you know yeah. what I was thinking is, do you remember what we talked about at Summit, how um, important SDI is against, like, the fighting game characters and stuff? 
Yeah. I wonder if that plays a big fact because we talked about how Bluto's hands hurt. Yeah, he's talked about that before when it comes to SDIing like Kazuya, Ken, whatever stuff. But obviously, that's going to apply throughout the entirety of a set against Bayo. So obviously, yeah. not taking away like I still think Bloom played top notch, like the best. Oh, that absolutely. Bayo played in a long time, but I do think that you know I I ha it crossed my mind while we were watching the set. So yeah, I I think uh, there's a lot of key moments. Is that Gavin? I, I was muted. <laughs> oh, Charles was showing you he was muted? That's so funny. It didn't sound like... It, it was a lawnmower. Bro. <laughs> Tell B to put the lawnmower away. Don't edit it out. <laughs> Don't do it. I had yes, video I evidence. You saw the red. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> that was <just, laughs> just so good. New Jersey be like... <laughs> Who's cutting grass? Is it sunny up there? No, not near me, bro. It's raining. I, yeah, that's it's what raining I was thinking. Too. I'm like, bro, it's been raining every like day. All over the East every Coast. day. Are they coming back? <laughs> Sounds like they're coming back, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Mar Gavin has to mute and unmute just like me. That's so funny. Marcus, Marcus came home for this. He so the home. main thing I wanted to say was just some key things when it comes to Bale versus Wario. So I personally think. Bale versus Wario is pretty hard for Wario. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. Um, obviously, like, Bale is really great against aerial opponents, but Wario is also lacking in range and ground speed. So there's a, there's a lot of spots where Bale gets to do whatever they want. Um, and I also think Gluto's SDI was pretty weak. And I also think he was sometimes swinging really preemptively. And then getting bats with end or it was too early so you didn't catch the end lag on a special move and I don't know I think Bloom did a really great job like basically maneuvering around Gluto the whole set and I think Gluto's I guess inexperience didn't help either yeah and I think let me see let me check the set count between because I'm pretty sure it's like heavily in Bloom's favor it's 3-0 three three is it three, I was just saying I thought four. I thought it was 4-0 or 3-0 I couldn't remember but damn and two of them obviously coming from this tournament as well so yeah. dude uh, stopping Abba, who was on a tear, like, I think that day two, I think Abba dropped one or two games on the way to Bloom, if that, but then just got 3-0. It was just, it's <laughs> insane. It like, what happened? Like, Bloom know, is it's just... Really strange. Uh, well, I think a lot of it is just Bloom has been becoming... I mean, we've all watched a lot of these EU tournaments and seen Bloom, like, hit, you know, top 16, top 8, you know, just kind of work their way through and, and watch them get better, but damn, yeah. This weekend was a statement, I think, for sure. Yet again. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I think it's so sick that we're seeing a bunch of different representation from Europe, from different countries really show up, right? Uh, obviously, we have Bloom. We've had Gluto. We have Siski as well. I believe Siski represents uh, Spain, if I'm not mistaken. So really cool to see a bunch of different talent. And I kind of want to go back onto the uh, matchup that Gavin was talking about, Bayo gluto or bayo versus wario and this is a general rule of thumb it's not like set in stone but this is what i believe for wario is if if a character forces wario to play more grounded the matchups gets harder and harder the more you force wario to be grounded because wario's grounded options i wouldn't say are bad but they're pretty lackluster comparatively to his aerial options right Obviously, Wario, insane air drift, right? You can do a bunch of different microspacing. He has fantastic aerials. They're a little stubby, but they're pretty quick. And you can do cross-up things. And, you know, your up air is like something ridiculous, like minus two or something like that, I believe. So you, your airs are also pretty safe. And you have very good burst aerials. And you have the mobility on top of that. Bayo really forces a lot of characters, especially if you're tall. Wario is not the tallest character, but you're essentially always playing around like jump instant ABK. That is the main neutral burst option for Bayo, since all of her other grounded burst options are really slow. So you're constantly playing around that, and Bayo inherently just controls a lot of airspace when she does that. And it's her main combo starter, right? So because of that, really forcing Wario to play grounded, and it's almost like a matchup like Sonic. Sonic really forces Wario to play grounded, not so much in a burst way, just it's just it's on the flip side where it's like Sonic has such a good anti-air that Wario, it's hard for Wario to drift in aggressively. But Bayo, it, it's like you just you you force Wario to play grounded from so far away. I I, I don't know if Bayo is worse than Sonic, but uh, 
Um, I, absolutely I doubt not. it. Absolutely not. Like so- Sonic is like <laughs> probably Wario's one of one of Wario's hardest matchups. But yeah, War- Bayo just seems more annoying, and it, it might be a little harder for Bayo to get the KOs and stuff. That's where Sonic kind of like Sonic doesn't care who what character you are, right? You're gonna yeah has one of the most broken confirms to spin charge into the fair. But yeah, I guess just my two cent on like Wario matchups in general, and particularly like Bayo Wario. Yeah, I, I think yeah. we saw a lot of that too, kind of coming back, you know, jumping back and forth between the tournaments. Lost Tech City, Mars versus Lima, great set. And similarly, Zerusu loves her hand. She loves jumping, you know what I mean? And But Bayo, she, you go in her airspace, she's going to shoot you down, you know what I mean? You're going to be eating 40, 50 off of a Witch Twist or a Stray ABK anti air, right? But Mars, what he did a lot with Zero Suit, and she is obviously taller than Wario, but he was crouching just a lot, just raw crouching and crawling, like just to kind of bait those things out and try to get he up smash a good amount too um, against Lima. So definitely seeing the opposite side of that come through and, and be true on the other side, Charles, where you take a character like Zero Suit, who also likes her time in the air, but and is taller than Wario, and shrinking that hurt box down for Bayo, just making it hard for Lima. Because yeah. Lima's conversion game is just insane, so you, you can't give him anything. Otherwise, you could just, especially Zero Suit, how light she is, she could just die so easily against Lima's Bayo. Yeah, and something that I think Gluto had trouble with against Bloom was since Bayo's all over the place and you don't want to jump, Gluto was just sitting in shield a lot. Like he was very rigid, and that, and then whenever Bloom would commit or do like more than one special or whatever it was. He would do like a rising move out of shield and then whiff or get bats within. And like he was a little too preemptive on all of the positioning or punish attempts on Bloom, like not really being super aware of the end lag, I guess. But it's also a thing with like range and speed. And you're getting bullied in the shield for so long. It's like I feel like Gluto really didn't know when to swing. And like has just said, something that would help a lot is this is something Wario could do as well. Crouching and crawling. Wario also has a crawl himself. Yeah. Um, but Zero Suit has a bit more range and speed, burst speed in general on like on either front, um, and like better anti airs. But there, it's still an idea that you would want to apply against Bayo is like kind of inching in and out of that burst range and trying to find if you can swing second rather than trying to swing first and just getting anti aired for it or something or like just hit by a burst option. Um, so yeah, that's a big thing I noticed with uh Bloom versus Gluto is. Bloom got to really control the pacing of the game for basically the entire time. You know what's funny? We're like, <laughs> we're talking about it like, like Ludo got smoked. <laughs> like, no, <you> know? no. <laughs> That's yeah. a good point, yeah. Like, we're just talking about the matchup, but Ludo yeah, still yeah, played yeah. it really well like Ludo, he usually Ludo does. And really as he well. does, dude. It doesn't matter how bad the matchup is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, he's beaten the best Sonics multiple times. Yeah, like which he, is insanely impressive. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand how that happens. Alu, he thinks it's like, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's it, like both both of them were were three two, right? I know winners was because Bloom ended with yeah. that uh that combo off the the down tilt onto the platform with Fair, and I was like, as soon as that Fair one two three landed on the platform, I said, oh my gosh, he's dead. That is because because he had so much rage. I was like, it's Rose just dead, like, and that's crazy to think about too. And I that was something that I noticed early in the game with Bayonetta was a lot of her moves don't necessarily like uh, put you in positions that are awful, but they put you on platforms a lot. Like you end up in a lot of platform tech chase situations that are very unusual off of like a straight down tilt or like a down throw at like 20% or something. You land an up air and they go into tumble and land on the platform because a lot of her moves don't send far away anymore. And I've been seeing a lot of Bayonetta's get a lot more success from, like, instead of trying to do a full confirm, they'll, like, use the platform setup first, and then they'll go for the confirm off the platform. Yeah, because if they just get a, a little bit of elevation, they actually have a chance of taking stocks right. off their combos. Mm-hmm. And if they don't have that elevation, 99, t- 99 times out of 100, they're not going to get a kill off of their combos. But if they find a way to elevate you, whether it's a, a true combo or not, like, it'll actually manage to take stocks. So that's a yeah. really good observation. The jump read Lima got on Meister, for example, is a very yes. good, uh, like, example of that. Where it's The like, higher oh, this I... combo starts. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. And what's funny is <laughs> I have a friend that's, like, he talks about Veo, and he's like, bro, honestly, that character just kind of disables the opponent's jump button. And I'm like, 
you're kind of right. Like, yeah. it's weird to think about it that way, but a lot of times, like, you don't want to hit that button. You you hit jump, and you're in that ABK range. Well, see ya. And that speaks to how strong, like, a single move that Bayonetta has is. Yeah, and that's ultimate too, right? It's a very jump heavy meta, very mash heavy mm-hmm. meta too. So you look at her other two, again, Witch Twist just being a great out of shield option. If you're not spacing properly, if she forces yeah. you to space improperly, all this like swinging second. Can do. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah. Her burst options and her ability to combo off of them is is wild. Her edge guarding is super good too, obviously. So <laughs> character obviously still has some really, really good strengths and. I like it too. Like uh, I love where Bayo is because she's definitely one of those characters too that really rewarded people for sticking with her as well. You mm-hmm. know, like these specialty combos and these routes that they're taking. I'm like, damn, I would have never thought to do that before. You know, like I play the character casually and like think she's fun and, and kind of cool and stuff. But damn, some of the stuff they were doing in tournament was just it's wild. It's yeah, wild. Has was like, oh, it's time to pick her back. I up. was thinking about it every. I think no, about it every not. time. No, I think about no, it every no. time though. I was like, time to pick up. I, I do too. I do too, yeah. Mm. The amount She's of fun. time. She takes a lot of time. Yeah. I'm sure okay. you're aware. Like, even in you guys Smash ready 4. To I'm not. No, hell no. Oh, hell even no. in Smash 4, it took you a long time to, like, yes. really, like, yes. feel like you had Bayo down. Yeah. Um, uh, I I think what Haz mentioned is actually really nice for what I wanted to say. I, I feel like Bayo developed really naturally. Um like I think a lot of the players had the hard stuff out of the way and then like a lot of it really developed really smoothly from there and the buffs were really nice. Yes. Like for example, like yeah. the, at the start of this episode, we talked about how she gets the combo and then like gets a couple straight hits. And I think they have the hardest part down because I think they got really good at the, the, the stray hits first because the character had to develop to like have that consistency with the damage output first. Um, and you know, you can see how, how disciplined and patient the top Bayonetta players are just because getting those openings after the initial combo is so hard against a lot, especially a lot of the top tiers. Um, like at first you would see Bayonetta get her her bread and butters and then just slowly lose the game from there because opening your opponent up with a straight hit just got really hard, especially if you're trying to take a stock. And I, I think that's why I really liked watching Bloom and Lima play this weekend because I think some of the coolest parts of Smash is like, you know, finding ways to, you know, like how are you going to kill Game & Watch consistently? Like if you're fr- if you're playing from right. Lima's perspective or how are you going to kill Super Heavy Wario consistently if you're playing from Bloom's perspective? And seeing the way they did that was really nice because it was just patient. It was pretty slow paced and that's like kind of my favorite like thing, like, you know, a balance between like creativity and like kind of methodical. And I don't know, I think I think that's why I like Bayo in general. She's just a cool character. True, she, true. And, and like you said, the no, I'll never play aside outside of friendlies, like definitely you know, stressful this character is in tournament to hit that like I said, some of the shit that they were hitting, I like training mode combos, it's wild and they were just so caught like they didn't yeah. pop off or anything. Like it was just all like, "Yep, this is just what I need to do." Like, yeah, this is what I do. This is, this is what the character does, and she looks insanely broken. Then you try to do it, especially against people like Luto, like Meister, and it's just like, "How the hell? I can't hit these." You know, my little brother. <laughs> how the hell am I gonna hit these against these players? It's just never gonna happen. Yeah. But again, just rewarding the characters. You know, obviously, I think she's always kind of had a place in Ultimate's meta um, to a much smaller extent than other characters. But she never completely faded, right? Because of players like Bloom and Lima just being so strong and dominant in their own regions. And then, you know, at, when they get the opportunities to shine at majors, they did such a good job here. So, yeah. It was, I mean, I had a really fun time. I still really like the character. I love watching and the way she plays and all that good stuff. So I thought it was great. Yeah, and I mean, it, it was, for me, the funnest part was the combos were nice, but more so just kind of rolling off Gavin's point when, when watching them get the KO effectively, right? Because especially in the beginning of the meta, like it was before the buffs and all that, it was, I would play against Bayos, like Wolf Bayo, and I'm like, I'm getting to 180. 150 to 180 every single stock. And this is why this character's trash, yada, 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 right? And it's when discipline and discipline crosses over with uh, creativity and discipline like come together. And it, it has a really nice mix. And, yeah. you know, the Bales were yeah. getting pretty reasonable stocks. Obviously, they're still, 
you know, like some chic esque stocks where it's like, okay, 150, 160, 170. Like it's really, really tough to get this back air yeah. 200. I'd need to get the fourth though, right at the edge and stuff like that. But the, the, I think the fair confirms really, really helped a lot, but yeah, overall the, the meta for Bayonetta is like surprisingly been pretty good. And even, um, I remember the very, very early, I believe, God, it was, a. Uh, I think shadow PR right when uh, for Genesis six had a really good run top 32 stuff like that. So there's been sprinkles of Bayonetta results, but now we're seeing them in a more consistent level and at a lot higher level as well. That, that which time into the fair one was so nostalgic because back in smash four, you had to hit your opponent out of the, uh, their move. So your yeah. smash attacks would beat them out because in ultimate, just a little fun fact, but in ultimate, the smash attacks are like sword moves, but in smash four, they had item priority. But you had way more time to be fair in Smash Four, so it was not that yeah. hard to do. Yeah. It, it was just Dude, it was just a little cool thing. That was the other thing. Some witch time conversions were insane. Like it, it felt they just move so fast when they hit witch time now. Obviously it's not, you know, nothing what compared to what Smash Four did, but the optimization that they're able to get even on that smaller amount of time, very, very impressive. Like again, yeah. it's just a character that it was and the fact that we got two of them back to back as well, like winning a tournament and getting third in a major as well. That hasn't really happened a whole lot, obviously, in Ultimate. So it was just really cool to kind of see that happen, like, I don't know, six hours apart from each other or whatever. So Yeah, it was, whatever really, it, was. it was really strange. I was like, oh, snap. Yeah, Flashbacks, for sure. <laughs> Flashbacks, man. Yeah, I guess we can transition to uh, Lost Tech City. Obviously, uh, congrats to Mars. I think, yeah. uh, yeah. I think we, we were watching it. Um, I caught bits and pieces of it, but I, I watched the majority of Top 8, and I was watching it in Discord with Gavin and some other homies and stuff like that. But it was a, it was a good watch. And even throughout the tournament, like even before Top 8 started, I know uh, I know Tweet was saying, like, oh, man, like Mars is – it feels like Mars is playing so well. You know, very yes. quick, very snappy. I think when whenever I feel like Mars is playing well, it's when he's overwhelming his opponent with speed, and it's like – blatantly obvious like he's on the basketball court just constantly breaking your ankles and you're just, just like Geez, yeah dude, like man this guy is just so much faster than me so much like quicker and snappier these decisions like he by the time when i play mars and friendlies and he's playing well i feel like i make a decision but he's already made the next two decisions yep. or yes. three decisions ahead dude. of me and i'm like well, fuck this the, is bullshit you know what dude, i mean the, like, <laughs> it, he is bullshit and i i've played against a good like a handful or more of top players and obviously you guys have well but as well but mars and light obviously which is funny because they're from the same region similar kind of quick character stuff it's just like dude what the what the fuck do i do well when light does it it's like a work of art because it's oh, wait but, what uh, i'm just it's wait oh, oh my oh, god dang, this buddy. Guy, go back on mute chuck what the heck uh <laughs> dude but just playing against them it's just like because playing against Gavin's very different. Because Gavin's like, damn, I feel like I can't do anything. But like, he slowly sets in because he's not rushing you down or anything. But with Mars and Light, it's like that camping in your face shit. That the second you press a button, they press a better one, or the second yeah. you move, they move to a better spot. Like it just happens so rapid fire. Like it's just very different from other top players. And also for him, and Mars tweeted this out himself. But when I saw him get uh to day two and he had to play zamba i was like all right he's got a pretty good bracket for himself here potentially yeah. in winners it was zamba obviously zersu traditionally does very well against rob doesn't mean it was free by any means because zamba's godlike and mars has drop sets the robs uh, before um meister and lima and i was like all right zersu does really well against meister however uh the last two times that they played mars lost actually a glitch and you remember i, I forgot about this one actually but ultimate summit three uh, where he tried Snake and Falcon, which to me I was like, dude, I do remember that. Yeah, well, that was because he was already guaranteed first seed in the pool, so he just. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I would, well, it was that, and it was yeah. That's true. I guess that's a good point. But he did lose the Zero Suit Game Five at, at Glitch, but still, yeah. Meister Meister was definitely like catching up or like closing the gap. I remember him losing at Glitch as well. Um, but this time, I think that's Bro. like such a it's such a statement to. I don't know that Meister is able to keep up again in that bad matchup, but dude, Mars looked dominant when they played, uh, forcing him immediately off into Sora and Grands. And then yeah. he, Mars has always been good against Bayo, so and he played really well against Lima. Very disciplined, like able to, like you guys yes. said, he, he can put the pressure on, he get the like run at you and like you know make you hit dumb buttons and do all that stuff. But he can also play very patiently when he needs to as well. And yeah. against Bayo, against Lima's Bayo, you're gonna have to do that. I don't want to make Gluto sound like he had a poor performance or is like a bad player or something. But I think Mars yeah, played a lot more aware of Bayo's intricacies. Mm. Um, and I think the fact that both 
both matchups happened, like Bayo versus or Bloom versus Gluto and Lima versus Mars are really nice sets to watch if you're interested because I feel like there's a lot of contrast for better or worse um, when it comes to like fighting Bayonetta. Um, but yeah, I think Mars was very ready, ready, really disciplined, very aware of like very niche things that maybe even other top players wouldn't be aware of. Um, and I think the same goes for Lima. I think Lima is whenever I watch Lima play or uh, when I played against Lima myself at um, Momocon, Momocon, I think mm-hmm. um, it always feels like Lima's really studied for whatever his match is. I don't know if this is actually the case or not, but he feels really prepared for like niche situations. So it's really hard to get easy stocks or get easy damage. And that's why like watching Lima play versus Meister and get that W on Meister, I wasn't surprised. I feel like, especially if Lima is getting like a run back or something, like it feels like Lima's has the edge. I feel like Lima's very studied and very prepared or at least just adapts really fast, maybe both, but yeah, um, as someone that I I have like a – I think I've mentioned this once on the show before, but I have like a weird bond with Mars because we like got good at the game at the same time and we're like similar in age. And I also think if I could pick anyone in the world that plays kind of like me, I don't think anyone comes even close. But if I had to pick someone, <laughs> I think I, I would pick – I think I would pick Mars because I do think I play very strange, but I do think I would pick Mars. Um, I just think he's a weirdo when he plays. Like I genuinely, I just, and I wouldn't say that for myself, but I would say it's, it's like unexpected options. I don't know. I just, I just think, I think something clicks um, when I watch Mars play. And I was very quick to see that Mars was playing well. And yeah, yeah, I was definitely thinking Mars was going to win the tournament going into like top eight or so. Um, dude, and before all the YouTube comments, we tried to get him on the show this week, but he's still traveling. He's going to the big house. Yeah, so he's yeah. like, dude, I could, but the sound quality would be scuffed. So we don't want to deal with that, but we'll get him on for sure. Like he's, yeah. he's and we're on still the top trying to get Light list. to come on as well. And Light like, will come there, back. A, yeah. And yeah, there, there's a bunch of players we want to bring on, but we do want to know who you guys want to see. So drop a comment below. Besides those True. two, we know that we know that, and Ooh, we know Leo Swift again, song. obviously. Besides us, besides yeah, <laughs> obviously, uh, dude, I gotta say, shout out to Sen too. Great run, uh, finishing was that fifth, tied for fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else? Ness gets top eight a lot. Yep, consistent character. Weirdly, this is definitely the first time we. That's can a say weird that about label Ness. for Ness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but. Uh, something Charles said that I wanted to like expand on was like he said when Mars hits him like it, it or like when Mars does something it feels like he's two steps ahead it feels like you're doing something it feels like you ever read and then like you don't like whatever it is like I feel like that's when Mars plays at his best like he hits you with something really strange and before you could even process what just happened you got hit by three more things that were yep. really weird and you might have even lost a stock and like you just can't get your footing that's what it feels like when I'm playing against him and it's going really well for him. It just feels like I never actually got my feet on the ground or was able to process what just happened. And the same goes for light, but it's, it's, there's something different about when Mars does it. It feels more human to human rather than like in game. Hmm. When, when light, when light gets you with this, it feels like you're being like oppressed in the match, (laughs) but against Mars, it feels like you can't figure it out from a human to human perspective. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say on that. You know, what's interesting yeah. is I, I used to think that until I started playing light a lot more. And, um, well, first one thing he said to me was, I was like, bro, I don't understand like how you play this fast. Like it, it doesn't make sense. He was like, well, I had to learn how, cause otherwise I couldn't beat Mars. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's fair. Like, true. I mean, like, yeah. true. Like you're in the same region. You want to beat Mars. Yeah. You're gonna have to learn how to speed up because if you can't, you're just gonna get overwhelmed. But I started when since I've been playing him a lot more recently. Uh, he talks a lot when you're playing he, friendlies. He does. And if like he notices like a single habit, like he'll say it immediately and he'll keep harping on it. And Mars does the same exact thing. It's just Mars is a little more unconventional sometimes. Yeah. Where it feels like Light has, like, um, like 
predetermined answers kind of for situations. Mars is willing to be a little more creative in a lot of situations. That's not to say like anything against light because I think Fox allows that sometimes where like you want to go for very specific things to get your offense started and get very specific follow-ups where zero suits a little more free form in that regard where like you kind of, you're kind of looking for like your aerial follow-ups, but realistically against really good players, you're not going to be getting like a bunch of like, it's more tick for tack for sure. Yeah. So he like, he uses his like 17,000 neutral openings that he has to get to really like figure you out where like light, uses his like few neutral uh openings to figure out your advantage or your disadvantage state and he just like explodes you for it yeah i think yeah. that was really well said yeah i was gonna say and i think that's why zero suit suits mars so well too and the thing i've always said about him especially casting and watching him for so long is that he will pick up your habits and zero suit is a hell of a character to punish habits with for sure especially the way you tech the way that you move in the, de- the defensive the way you recover like the way he beat Esam was flip flip kicking him at the end as Pikachu, you know, and he was on box too. So he had so many angles he could have gone at, you know what I'm saying? Like, which is a whole nother topic actually too, which was very, yeah, interesting. we should talk about that for definitely. Sure, yeah. I think it's cool that he is because um, it does unlock some, he, his quick attacks to recover were insane. Like they were so good. I mean, in general, they were good, but the different angles and the various, he's always been good at that. Obviously, he's played the character since Brawl. You better know how to quick attack. Like, that's like the first thing <laughs> you learn, I think. Um, but he was hitting new levels with them. And he has to because Mars has always done well against him, actually, in all, since Ultimate yep. came out. He's been doing really well against. So it's funny because we say it's a good zero suit bracket, but I feel like Esam against any other Pikachu is not a good zero suit bracket. You know what I I'm think saying? his bracket was better than usual, but I do think Pikachu and Bayonetta were not particularly favorable right so i think yeah. it wasn't like the perfect bracket for him but it, it even with those those uh humps in the road i i do think it was still like better than average just because your suit has a lot of bad matchups in my opinion yeah oh well, for sure like player matchup wise right we mentioned that mars has a pretty good record on esam so when, when you look at the bracket that evens even it out though, a little bit yeah well right right like obviously you're still thinking about oh wow that's a bad matchup for zero suit but obviously mars has something figured out about the pikachu matchup or Esam particularly right yeah what's really interesting about that specific like dynamic is a lot of times uh you would find you would think that Esam's the more aggressive pikachu like yeah there's some t-jolts but like he's not like like i feel like shiny mark is the more disciplined between the two of them if we we're gonna compare pikachus yeah. um but when he plays against Mars, a lot of the time, like, ignore what you're seeing on the screen if you're watching, because he just did dash attack, dash attack, up smash. But <laughs> a, lot, a lot of the times, he's actually <laughs> being really reserved. And the times he's being the most successful is actually when he's playing really aggressive. But for some reason against Mars, I don't know if he's, like, scared or he doesn't think he can keep up tempo-wise or what it is. But, like, he he plays a lot slower than he does against um yeah, I think um, yeah. I think compared to some of the other bad matchups, I think Pikachu is one of the more doable ones, and it might not even be bad. That might be a stretch from me, but I don't know. I think um, there could be spots that are awkward, but Zero Suit's able to like disengage and like poke away a little better than most characters. Has the speed, and, and I think forward tilt. Like, yeah, that forward tools. tilt. Yeah. That forward tilt is such a good move, and I think Tyler is. Re- Mars is really good with it. Um, and yeah, I think what Marcus said could definitely have a lot of truth to it. Like, I think yeah. Esam might have a bit of like, just, you know, kind of got, they played a, enough sets to where like, there might be like a preconceived play style without even realizing it, like kind of like a mental thing. And I've seen Esam say it multiple times, like, oh, I'm, I'm confident versus everyone except Mars. Like that sentence has been said. Yeah, And I think, you know, I don't want to coach Esam or, like, say something that sounds arrogant or something. But, like, if I was Esam, maybe I would try to reframe that. I don't think he said anything wrong or right or anything. But I would probably reframe going into a set saying, like, you're the person I don't want. Like, I'm scared of. Because not only is that, like, a strange thing to say on your end as a competitor. It's also, like, you know, if I'm Mars, I'm like, okay. Sick. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's um, good, yeah. Dude, 
And I think, too, to Pink's credit about the, you know, kind of aggressive or more-in-your-face type Pikachu, there were a lot of up Bs out of shield connecting from Mars as well, and some of them even for KOs, too. So I don't know if it's just getting used to the box and that pressure is usually safe and, like, you're just messing it up, like, slightly because you're using the mm -hmm. different controller or yeah. whatever. But there's also, I thought Game 3 in their set was such a statement because it was on Kalos, which I'm always like, that's ECM's best stage. You get the Thunder yeah. Jolts on the wall, you get to recover, especially against Mars. It's very, like, very there. tough to deal with. Mars won game three. That was his counter pick. And then after that, he went to Smash. Esam shrunk the stage and went to Smashville. So they were fighting on top of each other more. I thought it was, and it works because he forced the game five off of that, which I thought was really interesting. That so is interesting for sure. The counter pick stages were very, very interesting in that matchup. But Mars took it down. And there was an SD, but it was game two, I think, or game three. No, it was game two when Esam was already like down quite a bit. Yeah. But you can definitely see the growing pains with the controller. Um, as well but i think i definitely think he's gonna stick with it he's like a he plays a lot like you might as well learn it's like new, learning a new character but just like making your current character better in some way yeah yeah Wait, we didn't talk about nico yet go ahead oh that was, that was the coolest thing. clip of the event true um wait no not yet not yet i saw was, like a couple more points on mars yeah, yeah yeah go there chuck was, go there's there definitely um some controller because i know you mentioned some controller issues uh i definitely saw esam like sometimes cross up by mistake when it wasn't intentional and like he would get upbeat out of shield and he was like bro like you would see him like throw his hands up a little bit or like get kind of frustrated like i, I don't know if it was frustration but it's like dang it like new controller it's probably wouldn't happen on my old controller but it happened but i did like how composed uh esam was despite making a, a lot of input errors on the new controller. yeah absolutely. that was that was really impressive to me yeah Chuck. And yeah, I, I think I think the way Mars compensates for some of Zero Suit's bad matchups is like he definitely takes weight into account and he goes for like some really hard reads and he was definitely taking out Esam at some pretty low percents, not every single stock, obviously, like yeah. we're watching here. But, um, you know, there, I think that's something that Mars is really good at, like the player to player interactions we were talking about earlier. And I think the thing to watch out for as well is that he... The reason why these certain matchups are bad, he has tools in neutral that he can use, but always look at the return, right? Angle down forward tilt or jab, for example. Those are great moves. Jab's frame one, dash up jab. Zero suit's like kind of tall, so it can anti-air sometimes. But like, what, you get six or seven damage out of it? That's <laughs> yeah. it. No, no advantage state. Um, said thing, same thing can be said with forward tilt at lower percent. So like, watch how much times Mars has to win neutral in some of these bad matchups. Even though he wins the set, like, it's very impressive. Yeah. Yep. how much times he wins neutral or how some of these hard reads he's getting and how early he's getting some of these certain stocks. So, yeah. and just, just one more thing I want to say about Mars in general, after just like playing him and stuff, there's no other player on the planet that makes me feel shitty at the game than Mars. Mars is like <laughs> one of the few people yeah. I'll play. And I'm just like, wow, he's like, he's so good at making me feel like I'm so fucking trash at the game yep whereas like yeah. there's other players that i'll play and i'm like wow you you are just very good and yeah you know what i mean like you're 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 really good you're really clean and by no means am i saying mars isn't that but just the way more like what he focuses on is a lot of player to player interactions which is again why i think zero suit kind of like matches him so well and when the player to player interactions aren't going very well and he's not getting his hard reads and stuff like that that's when you can see, see things kind of fall apart but yeah, just like my last two cents on. Yeah, I Mars. think a good yeah. way to like phrase it is like when I play against like players that are better than me, like when I play against Tweak or I play against Light or, or people like that, I just go, "Oh, they're better than me," right? Like I just feel like <laughs> they're, I just feel like they're better than me. Right. I need to when grind I play against, and catch yeah, up. And yada, yada, when yada. I play against Mars, I think, "Wow, I am so much worse than you." Like it's like it's yeah. weird like reversal thing where it's like I'm awful, like but. <laughs> When I play against them, I'm like, oh, they're very good. But Mars makes you – no, I'm terrible. Mars yeah. makes you feel stupid. He does. Straight up. He makes you feel like a dummy. He, but he makes, he makes like, the best it happens, players. It happens yeah. to me too. Yeah. <laughs> literally the best players Dude. in the world. Like he's he's beating everyone pretty There's much. There's like so. a moment of that all the time versus him where you're like – where you feel in, like ashamed of yourself. It's weird. Yeah. Dude, like he, the uh... amount of times he would do turn around down smash and hit people, I was like – How'd you like? Yeah. Why would they? Why would they even? You their feels, shield. You know the two players in bracket that are a little rude, a little spicy with their decision. Send and Mars. 
Yeah. So they're a little they're a getting little a little mean. rude out there, huh? They're a little oh, yeah. mean to you when right before right before they read you. They they're, they're kind of mean. Bro, um, uh with Mars too, it's like I didn't even know this was it was possible to have a habit in this situation, but you've called it yeah. out two or three times <laughs> in a row for no reason. Like you just <laughs> Or dunk me at fifty, then he'll, dude, he'd talk shit too if you play. If you're friends yep. with him, well, maybe even if you're not, I don't know. No <laughs> he'll he'll literally it. call you stupid too. He's he'll literally call you stupid. Yeah, the, yeah, nice, the one I always think of is I what, and I still do this, but like less obviously since he made fun of me for it. But I always threw Hadouken as I was recovering, like right towards the edge. He flip kicked me like three times, like dude, fucking stop! Like you're so <laughs> mad. And I'm like, All right, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> like no one else punishes me for that shit. What do you want me to do? Like this is I'm learning. Yeah. Like but. That shit, it helps, honestly. I like that stuff. Like, it, yeah. I think friendly rivalry competition, like you said with Light, it's the same thing. They push each other so much. Like, they, they really have and, and still do, obviously, to this day. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the final point, I, I think we're talking so much about Mars because he really is a different player and he also won the tournament. So, there's no problem talking about that. But Charles mentioned, like, making, making up for some of the rough situations or matchups. And I think... The, the big call-outs, even that don't lead to stocks, really mentally make his opponent feel like they're on an even playing field. It's like, even if it's like a weird, like, Zare read that does no damage, but it felt like you just got super called out for something, right? Like, that, that that's what I really think helped. Yeah. Some of the bad yeah. All right. Other players in the tournament, uh, Sand we talked about already, obviously. Lima we've talked about quite a bit already. Uh, uh, dude, what about probably, I don't know, there were a couple big entrances in this top eight, including Kirby Kid. Shout out to the kid himself, obviously. Yeah, talk about sticking with a character hey, forever. Yeah, talk I love about K. Rool. Me too. Good yeah, stuff. dude. Congrats His K. Rule is it. so sick too. His... He looks to convert off the crown like Belmont's off a cross. Like, it is yeah. so impressive. Like, all the time. Like, his turnaround up smashes and shit, it's so fast. So, Nico, I, I, honestly, maybe the best entrance into the top eight. Uh, that final conversion against Sky so it's, it's one for the ages. It's one for the ages. Yes. Really it. I love Cloud Strife. Honestly, that was one of my favorite sets just because I love Incineroar and Cloud. Incineroar versus Cloud was just great. They were just Imagine. swinging. Yeah. Also... That's how things become normal. People lab weird stuff. Yeah. Lab the weird stuff. True. It's never going to happen. It's never going to work. And then it works. And people are like, wait a second. Maybe I'm that is lab practical. That. Yeah. He, I'm uh, lab it's going to happen at all the local tournaments next week. Nico specifically, at, he said, people who said that would work, you know, like, fuck you and all this stuff. And then he added Spargo. I was like, oh, shit. Like, damn. <laughs> you added Spargo. But I also uh, yeah, feel yeah. like I've seen Spargo do something similar, so it's yeah. really weird that he that Spargo they probably said that. They must have talked about, about it. that setup. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was definitely sure. it, probably lighthearted. I love it, how it, it said definitely. Definitely. probably Well <laughs> and even Spargo was like, all right, I, you know, I, I give it up, you know, like whatever. Like he was like, Okay, you got it basically. So yeah. Spargo yeah. gave it up, dude. <laughs> gotta yeah. give it up. After that, yeah, you gotta so um, good to see Meister too do well at a tournament as well. I feel like I haven't seen him at a U.S. tournament in a minute, or at least in a top eight. So I don't know if that's on me or on him. But there was either Smash way, on, but oh, obviously yes. It's like yeah, sent yeah, Smash Con basically. Smash Con. But that was like obviously like it was two months ago. Yeah. Three months right. ago seems forever ago. Yeah, I was like in the Smash ago. Ago. Bro, There's three majors every weekend in the on. Smash verse. Sure. That's like seven tournaments ago what it's been 150 <laughs> majors have passed since then dude like yeah. i'm just you know you know but it is good to see him obviously he's always been consistent as hell so but this like the top 32 was just insane like so much yeah. could have happened obviously so like between... something Go. about like meister meister's dominance in smash ultimate really <laughs> feels like the amount of effort people have to put in to beat him to like make an upset or like beat him in a bracket match. It feels like I'm watching like someone overcome the hurdle, like like beating DeBuzz for the first time or something. Like him and DeBuzz and Meister, it feels like you have to put a life's worth of energy and able to take a set off of them. Like them specifically. Like in like Lima getting that win in winners and then like just and then Meister's just ready for round two in losers. You know what I mean? Like like Meister is just someone you have to be prepared for to win a tournament. Like, and yeah. I, that's why I make that comparison to Buzz. Like, I think of players like Zamba too, 
Like you got to be ready to fight Zamba if you're in top eight, because he's probably in top eight right there with you. Um, so it's just, just a lot of like familiar faces in this top eight. And then obviously Mars winning isn't like, uh, it's been a, a while since Mars got a big W, but you know, a lot of it does feel kind of familiar in a way. Like these players have just really cemented themselves as like just professionals. Yeah. Dark Wizzy just shy of top eight as well. You know, a player who's yeah. been kind of cl- like clawing his way back to that position. So that's good to see. Just barely short too. Losing to Louise, who was upset in winter. So yeah, it was it was a great tournament, honestly. These were two really good tournaments. And I kind of yeah. love that we have that. And you know, we see we get the Japanese tournaments. So those are tough over here because they're on at like three in the morning and like Marcus watches them. Uh, that's about it. No, actually, I usually watch them too, honestly. But it just <laughs> it destroys me though. I'm like, I'm so tired. Like, I want to be true really human like do things you know like just wake up at a normal hour and stuff but those tournaments they're too good to watch so the eu tournaments i love that it's like the day show and then like the night show over here basically you get two yeah awesome that is tournaments. Nice. I, I love it dude the time difference is perfect so um yeah it was two amazing tournaments congrats to the bayos the uh, third obviously for lima and first for bloom uh congrats to mars uh kirby kid top eight that was amazing obviously wholesome moment um Anything else, Scott? I mean, we're going to the big house this weekend. Me, Charles, and Gavin. Hey. Yeah, I guess that's the final thing to mention is uh, we are going to be recording an October bonus episode for the Patreon as well. So if you have anything you would like to ask us, feel free to support that. Thank you to, to everyone who already does as well. And yeah, Tweak Talks will be at Big House. I'll be competing. Uh, Haz will be there and Charles will be there. And we're going to be doing some Tweak Talk stuff there. Yeah, um, Friday at 5 o'clock Eastern, we're going to yeah. be doing a Q&A. So if you go to, and we'll have our production people put the uh, the link in the description here. Uh, if you donate, you get to ask us questions. So if you wanted to do that Pokemon tier list thing that we did a while ago, you could send those in. We're doing those again, but you just have to make a donation. Just say it's for Tweet Talks, and we'll answer your questions live. If we don't question enough questions from the donations, we're going to go live to people there. And if no one gives a shit about us there, then we're going to do it to the chat. So be in any of those places or <laughs> get to us however you can, and we'll we'll take it from there. Um, yeah. yeah. And then Charles and I commentating first half of top eight. Let's go. Let's Ooh, go. It's been a minute since is, we've got a block together. I'm so sick fun. news. I can't wait, dude. I can't wait. We're going to have fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I mean, how are you feeling uh, competing, Gavin, for a uh, big house? I, I know we're kind of towards the tail end of the top eight, but how how is your? You know, we, we I feel like every week we get a little a little tweak update on you know yeah, what's, yeah. what was he cooking, man? So what are you cooking for a big house? Like character roster and stuff. I've been practicing pretty uh, rigorously. Um, I have only touched Diddy since Summit. I have not played another character a single time. <laughs> for better or worse what does that mean do you think you're i don't you? know what that means oh, God, i know you don't know <laughs> i just everyone's gonna say but well you've only been practicing diddy and it's like sephiroth it's like what wait where yeah. did that come from yeah next week i'll be like yeah i didn't play diddy at big house nah I, gavin I'm, I'm, do be doing that though i'm you heard it here i will only play diddy kong at the big house 10 only diddy kong that wouldn't surprise me. I'm holding you to that. I if I see Sephiroth, if if you pick, you're not seeing. But Sephiroth. if I see Sephiroth, oh my God, I am going to pull you hair out Sephiroth. of my head. What about Jeez. what about PT? Don't what about it. like what are you gonna do if you run into Steve? It's just all Diddy. Diddy can do it. He, I know Diddy, Diddy was do it. he was playing so well. He just got fucking Diamond F smashed at forty. Like <laughs> I know, I, I know. Any character can get Diamond F smashed at forty. Did you see what happened to my man Larry at the give it That would have been fun. Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Like, um, it's also B's birthday weekend. Oh, it's too late. Mega yeah. Late. We're gonna, so the Tweak Talk stuff and B's birthday, we're gonna hang out with, like, with y'all. We like, gotta I have a birthday it, dinner. Birthday yeah, it's, are, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good time. I'm looking stuff. forward to it. And I, I think I've, I just, I'm feeling good, especially with, with Diddy. I feel like I'm just playing well and just, Diddy Kong is fun. <laughs> yeah, all you got to do is not rage. That's a tall order, but I'll try my best. Okay, okay. Very hard I'm, to do when I'm you're just playing kidding. Smash Ultimate. You're fighting a lot True. of... You're fighting so many different things when you're playing Ultimate for better or yeah. worse, right? Like, is, is there's, life there's so many battlefields going on. Is Sonic's going? Is going, yeah. Is Sonic's, Sonic's going? Not, we were just looking if Sonic's was going. I don't oh. think so. Yeah, that's was asking me. I don't know. I could have asked Sonic's myself, but... Um, I think light's going. I You're don't think Fox is going. 
I mean, what there's is, sure. is Meister going? I'm trying to think of like everything. Yeah, Meister's <laughs> going. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, Everything shit. that just tilts uh-huh. Gavin. The chances <laughs> this tilts people. everyone. Maybe except for Maybe not like... ours. Oh, uh, yeah, true. Oh, Wait, oh, what see. happened? Oh, there he is. See ya. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. That's the big house thing right there. But yeah, that's what's going. True. Is this seating? I have. Yeah, no I mean, it looks like it. Yeah. For the audio, oh, there's yeah, there's... we just. Audio only. We just pulled up the seating here. All right, let's see. So, someone read it off. Go. What's top? What's top 16? Uh, light, Onan, Meister. Uh, I'll do an order. One is Light, two is Onan, three is Meister, four is Riddles. Thank you. Five is Tweak, six is the Buzz, seven is Cosmos, eight is Zomba, nine is Aaron, ten is Kamehame. That's great. Eleven is Mutase, twelve is Apollo Kage. I hope he has a great tournament. I love that guy. Uh, thirteen is Sky J, fourteen is Mars, fifteen is Base Mage, sixteen is Ned. Shortly after that, you got Wadi, Icy Mist. MVD XL Zenodo. That's XM XL, by the way, from New England. The Let's Kostia. go Zenodo. Mm-hmm. Zenodo, the goat. Uh, Dark Wizzy, Esam, Shattuck. And then Jared is king. I think, you know, great performance semi recently with the yeah. with the Shulk. Iken, Black Twins. Iken. Uh, doorstop. Iken. I said it right, dude. I said what I said. Uh, uh, Black Twins, Doorstop, Enhanced PV. Loaf, oh. Leon, and Raven King. That's top 32. 33 is Kobe, too. And Burst is 34. Low 1 is 36. Okay, uh, buddy. <laughs> dude, this is, yeah, this is a really, obviously, a really big tournament. Yeah, this is a pretty I'm, sick lineup. Bro, I've never been before. I'm really, really excited to do it. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, I've never been before, so I made it. Uh, it was one of my goals this year to make sure that I went to one, so I'm glad I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think that about wraps it up, though. We're getting close oh, yeah. to episode 70. Next week will be episode 70. And once again... October wait, does that mean? Episode. Wait, what? What episode is this? We are, we are seventy. Oh no, this is sixty-nine. Yeah, yeah, we're on seventy. I thought the sword. Oh, was this is the meme number. We did yeah, it. Well. We got. We made it to the meme number. Guys. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Reddit. We this made it to the meme number. Dude, wait until episode four twenty. It's gonna be too lit. Until, oh, see, oh? that's the next goal. That's the next. Yes, goal. I will be waiting for that. That's a lot of waiting. <laughs> that is a long time, dude. <laughs> but yeah, Holy thanks shit. for watching. Y'all. See Bye. ya. Bye-bye. Oh wait.